Guys, Ben Shapiro is confused. I mean that in general, but also specifically he is confused about a recent study that found that this year's Sturgis motorcycle rally was a super spreader event that led to a huge uptick in COVID-19 cases. About 260 cases directly tied to Sturgis had been detected as of September 2nd, according to the Washington Post, Shapiro tweeted. And I'm going to have to hear some answers on why Sturgis, 400,000 attendees, was more of a spreader than BLM marches that drew a reported 40 times that number. Well, hey, if Ben Shapiro demands some answers, I am more than happy to help. Normally, I think that a team of medical professionals is necessary to deal with Ben Shapiro's problems, but he's confused about a scientific study. I'm here to help. Shapiro is replying uh, to a new study published by the Institute of Labor Economics titled The Contagion Externality of a Super Spreading Event, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally and COVID-19, which estimated that in the month following the rally, 266,796 new cases of COVID-19 could be traced back to the event, which makes up about 19% of all new cases in the United States in the United States during that period studied. Those are huge numbers. And in a bit, I'll talk about why they might not be quite right. But first, let's talk about Ben Shapiro and why he doesn't think they're right. To counter this research, Shapiro references a Washington Post article from five days prior, which did in fact state that at least 260 cases could be linked to Sturgis. They say they got that figure by surveying various health departments, and then they qualify the figure in the very next sentence. Epidemiologists believe that figure is a significant undercount due to the resistance of some rally goers to testing and the limited contact tracing in some states. As a result, the true scope of infection stemming from the rally that ran from August 7th to August 16th is unlikely to ever be known. It's worth noting Sturgis had 460,000 attendees and that Washington Post article Ben Shapiro cites stated 260 cases and one death resulted from it. Uh, Compare that to a wedding in Maine recently that had 65 attendees and has thus far resulted in 147 cases and three deaths. So yeah, when they say that there's probably a significant undercount there, they're not kidding. So this new study did not merely survey random health departments. Instead, the researchers used uh, anonymized cell phone data to track what counties people were traveling from to attend the rally. They found that in counties with the largest relative inflow to the event, the per 1,000 case rate increased by 10.7% after 24 days following the onset of Sturgis pre-rally events. They also found that the county where Sturgis itself occurred uh, experienced a dramatic increase in their own caseload. And here's a fun tidbit. In addition to the irreparable damage done to human lives and general health health and well-being, uh, this being an economic paper, they also found if we conservatively assume that all of these cases were non-fatal, which we know is untrue, at least one person has already died, uh, then these cases represent a cost of over $12.2 billion dollars. This is enough to have paid each of the estimated 462,182 rally attendees $26,553.64 not to attend. Wow, I hope that Smash Mouth concert was worth it. Of course, Ben Shapiro would never rely entirely on the reporting of the Washington Post to combat a rigorous scientific study. So let's look at his other objection. Uh, I'm going to have to hear some answers on why Sturgis, 400,000 attendees, was more of a spreader than BLM marches that drew reported 40 times that number. First of all, allow me to point out, again, Sturgis was 462,000 people, not 400,000. Second of all, no Black Lives Matter protest drew a reported 40 times that number. That would be 18 million people. That would be nearly the entire population of New York State at one protest. Um, Sturgis was a single event in which 462,000 people converged in a city that's about six square miles, uh, which usually holds about 7,000 residents. No Black Lives Matter protest has even come close to those sorts of numbers. 
Still, uh, Black Lives Matter protests have definitely drawn tens of thousands of people. Why have none of those been considered a super spreader event? Well, had Shapiro taken the time to click the link in the tweet that he is replying to, he would have found all of the answers he was looking for uh, in this very helpful, full, free PDF of the study in question. Not only does the paper describe in detail the perfect storm of idiocy that led to Sturgis being a disaster, but it also references a previous study published in June by the same researchers, which found that no Black Lives Matter protest up until that point has led to any increase in COVID-19 cases. So first, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. Uh, in the study, Black Lives Matter protests, social distancing and COVID-19, published by the National Bureau of Economic Research, the researchers looked at protests of at least 1,000 people in 286 of the largest American cities, most of which uh, continued their protests for more than three days at a time. They found absolutely no increase in COVID-19 cases following any protest in any city. But why? The researchers acknowledge that it's likely the protesters wore masks, reducing the chances that they would be infected. And they were also uh, young and healthy and therefore less likely to report symptoms if they did catch COVID-19. And if you look at photos from the events, you do see um, some pretty decent compliance with wearing masks, but photos don't give us the entire story. It's a very difficult thing to study. Um, but just like in their, their Sturgis study, these researchers were able to study the anonymized cell phone data that tracked people's movements and gauged their social distancing. And what they found was that a protest, when a protest happened in a city, uh, the residents of that city were more likely to stay home and be socially distanced. So even if the protesters themselves were spreading the virus to one another, the people who were not protesting were more likely to not spread the virus. And in the end, these researchers found that it all balanced out to a point where a protest was even slightly likely to lead to a decrease in new cases in the city that the protest was happening in. So for Ben Shapiro's sake, let's compare that directly with what happened in Sturgis, according to this new paper. Unlike the protests, the residents of Sturgis were not more likely to stay at home during the rally. In fact, their cell phone data indicates that they were more likely to go out of their home to participate in all of the fun events that were happening, like Smash Mouth concerts. Of course, even if those residents had been more likely to stay at home, that probably wouldn't have balanced out. Black Lives Matter protests involved a fraction of the total population of a city, while Sturgis involved 66 times as many attendees as there were living in the city. Add to that the fact that Sturgis attendees were not wearing masks regularly. They were also inside a lot, crowding into bars and restaurants. Uh, they were also specifically there to socialize, which requires speaking directly to another person for an extended period of time, as opposed to a protest where if you're shouting, it's out into the ether and not necessarily at someone else's face. Uh, so there were, no, there were no masks. They were crowded together. They were inside. They were speaking to one another for an extended period. That is the, those are all like, that's the worst possible things that you can do during a pandemic. Uh, the only thing that could have made it worse is if everyone there was in an at-risk group due to their age or pre-existing conditions. Uh. Now that I've gone over why Ben Shapiro's skepticism is illogical and partisan, dumb and bad, uh, let me add that there are scientists who have valid questions about the Sturgis study's numbers. They're saying nearly 20% of all COVID-19 cases came from that one event. That is an insane number. That is huge. And to back that figure up, it would be nice to have really objective, clear data. Like, it's not an extraordinary claim in the way Sagan meant it, like with UFOs or psychics, but it's definitely an impressive claim. And an impressive claim requires impressive evidence to back it up. Uh, 
but we live in an anti-scientific hellhole. So we don't actually have the data that would conclusively tell us how bad this event really was. We still don't have adequate testing. We don't have ways for poor people to reliably access health care at all. And we don't have contact tracing. So these researchers are left looking at extremely messy data, making subjective choices about that data, and then trying to find a pattern. Statistical analysis is, to put it mildly, not my forte. So uh, instead of me going on about it for too long, I'm just going to direct you to a couple of Twitter threads, one by Rex Douglas, who is director of the Machine Learning for Social Science Lab at UC San Diego, and Kevin Griffith, who's an assistant professor at Vanderbilt School of Medicine. Uh, but the short summary is that the Sturgis study is interesting and probably correct that the rally was a super spreader event, but they don't really have the hard evidence to support those specific numbers. Of course, those numbers probably aren't quite right is all that Shapiro and his sycophants will take from this because they think this is all just a big cover up and that we liberal scum have made up an entire pandemic to stop them from having a good time while excusing protests that seek to improve the lives of millions of Americans. It's hard to encourage people to, you know, keep an open mind, but not so open that your brain falls out, while at the same time encouraging them to be skeptical, but not so skeptical that you stop believing in reality. But we try. As always, I'll end by saying, don't panic, wear a mask, stay home if you can, avoid weddings and motorcycle rallies, please. And just, I mean, just avoid the anti-science brigade whenever possible. Be safe.